This is a pretty exciting interview. We've got some major updates from the OneChain team. I have Temuji joining me on this episode to talk through some updates around MetaMask integrations, something coming in from the Polkadot ecosystem and another stable asset coming in as well. This is going to be really interesting and we're going to drop some alpha in this interview. So Temujin, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks a lot, Peter. I'm really happy to be here. I always enjoy your show and uh, yeah, it's a real treat to be back here talking to you and the Cardano community. And it's so good following your journey onto the Cardano ecosystem and seeing all these really cool things that you guys are doing. And one of the requests that I did recently was to see Dot from Polkadot come over to the Cardano ecosystem. What's happening at the moment? Can you give us an update with all of this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you mentioned, you, know, you, did, you did approach me at one point, just kind of inquiring about the possibility of connecting Polkadot and Cardano. And that really did kind of set us off on this path started looking around a little bit. And, you know, I was a little surprised to find that there was some conversation on kind of both sides, both in the Polkadot community, as well as the Cardano community about linking these two chains. And as most of your viewers probably know, you know, Wenchain integrated Cardano probably about a year ago. And one of the benefits of that is that Cardano is now technically connected to all of the different chains that we already support, near, nearing 40 chains at this point. And one of those chains uh, just happened to be Polkadot. So we had already previously integrated Polkadot. So there was a clear path you know, to being able to, to do this. So then we just got to work. And I'm happy to announce that the work is complete and that you can now technically move DOT directly from the Polkadot relay chain to the Cardano mainnet. That's pretty exciting because there's a, starting to be a lot more collaborations between either side. We've, we've got uh, the Unifiers project, uh, which I'm trying to be a part of more actively at the moment. And we're you know, introducing projects over there to Cardano and vice versa and sharing knowledge and uh, in levels of interoperability, governance and all sorts of things to try and bridge those gaps and share resources where they can be shared, especially with Midnight coming along and the substrate being used for that and the modular building of blockchains. It, it's kind of a really cool thing. And being able to bring DOT over now, uh, over to the Cardano ecosystem and vice versa, ADO to the Polkadot ecosystem is pretty exciting. And, and who knows what else is going to come out of this. I'm pretty sure um, a lot of the projects in the Cardano ecosystem and Polkadot ecosystem will work out liquidity rewards, incentives, and and a, a collaboration between either side. So I'm really excited about that one. Uh, what, was there anything else that we need to know about that uh, uh, cross-chain integration, uh, br the bridging of the assets? Sure. Um, well, first, you know, with your own role working with the Unify, uh, Unifier uh, team, you know, we're always looking to collaborate with different interoperability efforts. You know, we've said from the start, we don't really believe in this vision where interoperability should be the, do the domain of a single project. We're all about universal standards and, you know, part of establishing these types of standards is to work with other people. So, um, you know, this is just kind of stage one of interoperability between Polkadot and Cardano. It allows, you know, the transfer of assets. Um, but, you know, if we think about long term, there's so much more that you could theoretically do. You could do cross chain messaging so you can have true applications that exist simultaneously on both chains. Um, so there's still a lot of work to do. So, you know, if there's maybe you can serve as the bridge uh, between Unifier and WANChain and then we could try to bring interoperability between Cardano and Polkadot to the next level. But to um, actually answer your question, the things that people really need to know about DOT and Cardano is you'll still be able to access it via the same front end that um, you've, you've been used to, the bridge.wanchain.org. So where you go to bring things like USDT and USDC to Cardano, you just go there and you can also bring DOT over. You'll just select Polkadot as uh, you know, the, the chain and dot as the asset, and it works exactly the same way. Now, the only thing that doesn't work the same way is that um, you know, Polkadot does not use Cardano wallets, nor does it use EVM wallets like MetaMask. So yet another wallet has to enter the fray. So if you want to be the one um, you know, bringing dot over to Cardano, it's just something to be aware of. Uh, it requires a third type of wallet. <laughs> Yes, and I, I can't remember what wallet I did set up on the Polkadot side, but I do have one ready to go. So as soon as that bridge is open, or probably by the time this interview 
out. It probably will be open, but I'll be yeah. giving that bridge uh, a, a go and seeing how it all works and operates and, and trying to see where, where I can um, start providing liquidity and create a pool or something like that. So it'd be pretty interesting to see what happens there. Uh, but yeah, I'm also hoping that maybe you yourself um, and also other people who decide to try the Polkadot Cardano, Cardano bridge will also start to have a deeper appreciation for the need for interoperability between all these different ecosystems. Because even just something as simple as interacting with the wallets, that experience, that user experience between the different ecosystems is so vastly different. And you know, on some levels, it shouldn't be, especially if we have uh, you know, kind of mainstream adoption as, as the end goal. It is still quite a learning curve if you're only used to you know, transacting on Cardano or only used to transacting on, on an EVM chain. And now Polkadot has yet a completely other way of handling things. Um, <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's also one of the pain points that interoperability is hoping to solve. But th this kind of segues nicely over to this other thing that you guys are doing from uh, Catalyst Fund 10. I think it was Fund 10 or Fund 11. Um, 11. 11. And uh, it's all about bringing in that level of interoperability to MetaMask, where there are millions of users using MetaMask and being able to tap into Cardano native tokens using MetaMask. This is, uh, I, when I saw that, I, th I thought this is definitely something I would vote for. And of course I did. Can we get an <laughs> update? Well, for those that don't know, can we talk about the project first and then get an update of where you guys are at? Yeah, absolutely. So this was from Catalyst 11. MetaMask, you know, that was the hook. Um, in fact, it will work with any EVM wallet. So MetaMask and all those hundreds of millions of users there. But actually, any, um, you know, in the EVM world, there's a lot of MetaMask forks, which are essentially just reskinned MetaMask wallets. So anything that, you know, is a usable wallet on an EVM chain will work with this tool that we're building. And uh, right now, um, everything's on track with the milestones that we've set out. But um, as you said, maybe it's helpful to re-explain what this is. So the tool itself, it allows any on-chain logic on Cardano to be triggered by a single transaction on the EVM chain. So it makes use of something from a previous Catalyst round. I think it was Catalyst 10. This was from the fine folks at Anastasia Labs. They um, created these uh, smart routers. So we're, leverage we're leveraging the thing that they built and are building yet another tool on top of it. So you know, this is also kind of cool. But basically, these smart routers, they can be configured to basically run just about any type of on-chain logic on Cardano. And what we're building is the ability to trigger these from another chain. So a real-world example of what this might be used for and is the kind of use case that we're demonstrating in this uh, Catalyst proposal is being able to trigger a swap on a DEX on Cardano using a single transaction on an EVM chain. So if we're starting from Ethereum, and let's say, um, you know, I've, I'm only on, on Ethereum, but I've come across this really cool project called Hosky, or I guess, you know, uh, Nike is, is Nike. probably what you're yeah. all talking about now. <laughs> <laughs> but any, any token would work. Um, but, you know, I'm only on an EVM chain. I don't have direct access to this. The DEX is on, on Ethereum or any of the EVMs don't have these assets. Um, but you know, I, I'm kind of interested. I think it's an awesome, uh, awesome meme, meme coin, meme token. So what this allows me to do is, okay, I will click, you know, purchase this uh, either Hosky or, or Nike, sign a single transaction, and then everything else happens in the background. My funds, let's say USDC, will be bridged to Cardano, and then the smart routers will, you know, automatically take this USDC trigger a USDC to, um, if there's a direct pool, it'll be USDC to Hosky, or it can be USDC via ADA to Hosky, whatever route makes the most sense, trigger it through the DEX, purchase it, and then bridge the Hosky now back to my original EVM wallet, where I can then see it and hold it as a wrapped version, but it gives me you know control of that value. And so I was, I was able this way to kind of be a part of this movement that's happening, whether it's Hosky or Nike, without ever really needing to kind of learn a whole new ecosystem. We talked about the wallets at the start of this talk. They do function very differently. Maybe I'm only comfortable with MetaMask, so I can just only use MetaMask, but still participate in all these ecosystems. Now, that's what we're demonstrating in this, in this uh, catalyst. 
this deck swap, but it can be any, any type of on-chain logic. You can do stuff with lending. You can do things that combine lending and uh, swapping. You could do things with just purchasing NFTs. You know, this would be very useful for these NFT artists where, you know, ultimately it doesn't really matter which chain the NFT is stored on. If you're, um, you know, a purely art-based NFT, it's just people are appreciating the art. So there's a lot of use cases. So really the only limit is, um, you know, what developers can dream up in terms of programming into the smart routers, and then everything else will be able to be triggered from any EVM chain. All right. That's incredible. <laughs> that, that's really <laughs> exciting to see. And, and you're right. There are, some people are just so comfortable with their wallet that they have. They can't be bothered uh, pulling up another, uh, spinning up another wallet with another seed phrase and all that is just too time consuming. So having it from where they are at the moment and comfortable with, and then being able to bridge over um, automatically they wouldn't even see that as a bridge. It's just a, probably a little bit of a slower process for them and they get the assets back to the wallet. So that's that's beautiful. You also mentioned NFTs. That That's a surprise. So uh, the bridge is going to support uh, Cardano NFTs and uh, allow them to expand to different ecosystems. Yes, that was a, that was a good catch from you. Um, but yes, we have been working on uh, NFT cross-chain bridge um, to Cardano. We already supported it on some of the other networks, We you know, particularly EVM DVM. But we made it a priority once we um, you know, joined the Cardano ecosystem. So our Cardano to EVM NFT bridge is really not that far off. Um, so you'll be expecting to see more news as well as release of this um, you know, within a couple of months, I would say. Maybe less. All right. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, do projects have to do any extra work here? Do the DEXs have to do any work to uh, enable this MetaMask integration? Uh, do the uh, tokens themselves need to talk to you guys to enable the wrapping of their assets on other chains? Uh, what's the process there? Yeah, so from all the existing uh, tech stacks, whether it's the apps, the DEXs, the lending platforms, or the tokens, they don't have to do anything. Um, they just exist as they are because what the smart router is really doing, it's just triggering totally legal transactions on Cardano. It's not making Cardano do anything that it's not designed to do. So if a token can normally be traded, if a DEX can normally complete a swap, if a lending can do its borrowing and lending, it's just rather than having the user manually sign these transac transactions themselves, the smart router, you can imagine it as it's just doing these transactions on behalf of the, of the user. So nothing that the existing dApps or tokens need to do. The only um, kind of engineering work would be to set up this smart router to do what you want it to do. So this will be about which projects want to take advantage of this tool. You can almost imagine it like this is really a dev tool. So a, develop, a developer can use these to kind of make it do whatever they want. So of course, at this point, it uh, needs a bit of engineering work to just program the smart router. Uh, but once that's done, everything else and all of the different pieces of the Cardano ecosystem that it wants to interact with, this just happens automatically. Wow. Okay. That sounds pretty good. Um, is there a cost to the projects doing this or what's the business model behind it? The only cost is, um, you know, the cost of the development work itself. So uh, whatever engineer they have on staff, I assume, have some sort of salary. But we're not charging, um, you know, any developers to use these tools. This is a totally open tool. Um, and then any cost that's incurred, it's pretty minor. You know, there's when you do build on Cardano, you assume some costs here and there, some kind of off chain agents and things like that but nothing that's unique to the smart router itself, just the regular costs of existing on Cardano. And the tool is open to everyone and anyone who wants to use it and build. Okay. Um, and when will uh, this all be ready and operational for um, uh, projects and uh, uh, apps and all that to jump in and start playing with? Sure. So we're about, uh, we, we had five milestones in this Catalyst proposal. So three of them are, are are complete in terms of the, the the functionality that we've established as being those milestones. So um, we're a little bit more than halfway done. Um, each milestone what, has been about a month or so. So there's another two to three months until it's uh, functional. Then that's just kind of from tech readiness. Then then it'll be available. Um, you know, developers can decide if they want to do some experiments and build their own um, their own functions using this tool. Um, it might not be 
finished being audited, you know, the, the day that the final milestone is completed. So, you know, people can make their own risk assessment, whether they want to wait until it's audited before building, but it'll technically be ready, you know, within uh, two to three months. Okay, so. cool. You All never right. know with development, you know, sometimes something happens, <laughs> but if things hold the way they've been going and, you know, we've been hitting these milestones smoothly uh, thus far and basically on time. So, you know, two to three months if everything holds. All right, just around the corner then. Very, yeah, but I don't want to. Indeed. I don't want to catch you on Twitter <laughs> uh, three months from now and noticing that we are still uh, missing one milestone and then calling me out. So let's put a big asterisk on that. You never know with development. <laughs> yes, that's very very true. It's uh, never nice to put a timeline on these things. There might be some little tiny security thing that might just blow out for a couple of couple of weeks, couple of months. But that's okay. Yeah. We want things to work <laughs> properly, especially when we're moving cross chain. Uh, don't want things locked up and disappearing or anything like that. Um, Okay, this is all really cool and exciting. And you know, the the other day when you guys were telling me about this, I was looking up the uh, Cardano token registry uh, to see uh, the dot uh, <laughs> metadata, and I'd want to check if everything was there, so you know everything was all ready. But in that Git commit, I also saw another token in there at the same time, and I had to mm. look into this one. I didn't even realize what it was. It's X A U T. And this is tokenized gold. Can we talk about this? What are you guys doing with this? Yes, it's really um, it's really so hard to keep things a secret uh, when everything has to be <laughs> it's on, all on chain, chain, isn't it? <laughs> um, but yes, this is part of kind of ongoing efforts. Um, as you mentioned, this uh, XAUT, this is a gold-backed stablecoin issued by Tether. So this is the same company that issues USDT. And you know, the reason for this is Cardano, I think bit by bit, especially with the efforts of projects like Liquid, are really kind of becoming a, a pretty powerful hub for, for stable coins. You have the USDT, the USDC that we've bridged over. You have some of the synthetics. You have uh, MEAN, or I guess they just rebranded, but uh, US, USDM. Uh, you know, it's kind of becoming a, um, a more and more vibrant US, uh, or a more and more vibrant stable coin ecosystem, you know, especially after that was a criticism for so long. Um, but one thing that uh, ourselves and, and maybe even Liquid also, I don't want to speak for them, but they seem to have noticed is there's a big bias um, for USD backed stable coins. So this is a gold backed stable coin. We previously also bridged over a euro backed stable coin. So it's part of efforts really to just have more options for everyone in the Cardano ecosystem. Stable coins are cool. Everyone likes them. You know, the value is a little bit more predictable than a lot of, uh, you know, pure crypto. Um, but it's not always appropriate for everything to be back to, to USD. So being back to gold, you know, this is obviously something that happens in the off-chain world a lot, using gold as a as a value measure. So this, um, you know, will open the opportunity to do that on chain and for applications on Cardano to to do the same. I'm pretty excited about that. When I saw that, I didn't realize what it was uh, until you mentioned, oh, yeah, you found that uh, extra extra token that was bridged over. So I'm really excited about this one. I I, I love the idea and premise of trading uh, tokenized gold or gold-backed um, stable coin within the ecosystem as well, especially now that, um, you know, uh, the USD is... Uh, money printing machine you know it's inflating <laughs> so much at the moment we, we'd like something that doesn't inflate as much usually we look at the crypto side of things but that's being manipulated we also have gold now which would be an awesome option for trading on the Cardano ecosystem so thank mm. you so much for this it's going to be really interesting to see the liquidity come in and a lot of people taking the opportunities there um, is there anything else that you guys would like to talk about or announce in this interview? You guys always seem to have some sort of surprises uh, coming up for the Kadana users here. Well, you you kind of ruined all the all the surprises I had planned. You know, you picked <laughs> up on uh, the NFT bridge, the XAUT. So I don't know if I'm going to announce anything uh, else right now. Maybe <laughs> next time. Um, but I will uh, just mention that uh, we have a couple other Cardano related or Cardano relevant things going on, uh, mostly in Catalyst 12. So we have one uh, in collaboration with MinSwap. Uh, MinSwap has, you know, they're, they're the lead um, submitter, but it's for uh, an incentive program to kind of just build up the uh, DeFi ecosystem even more um, in the uh, Cardano ecosystem. So uh, we're working hand in hand with them on that. So do go check that one out if you're interested. And then we also have, um, you know, so the previous Cardano bridge that we built already audited by the fine folks of 
at uh, Anastasia Labs, but we have received some requests from uh, some of the other protocols to get a second audit. We also have things like the NFT bridge, which I think you know people also uh, expect to be audited. So we do have an audit related proposal on Catalyst 12 as well. So do feel free to go check that out. All right, brilliant. I'll put the links to all of those callous proposals in the show notes down below so people can hopefully support you guys in the awesome interoperability work that you're doing for the Cardano ecosystem. And that uh, proposal with MinSwap, I think, is absolutely brilliant. It, that, that whole incentive uh, to bring more liquidity over to the Cardano ecosystem is really what we need at the moment. So having those uh, bonuses there, I think, is going to do a wonderful job for the uh, TVL, DeFi, and everything else around it. But Temujin, thank you so much for joining me on this episode and taking me through everything that you guys have been up to and some of this awesome tech that you guys are building for the Kadana ecosystem too. Yeah, thanks very much. It's always a pleasure and uh, happy to come back anytime. Awesome. Oh, I'll hold you to that. You'll be back. <laughs> Speak soon. <laughs>